That leads us to a, a plan that Hillary Clinton released just before we started recording this that she calls a real plan to defeat ISIS, which three three steps. Uh, one, take out ISIS's stronghold in Iraq and Syria. Two, dismantle the global terror network. Three, harden our defenses at home and prevent attacks. Josh, how is this any different what? than Wait, Donald Trump? What, again? What, what was that? <laughs> How is this plan any different than Donald Trump's very well thought through plan to knock the hell out of ISIS? Because, first of all, it's not the best because what Donald says is the best because he says it's the best. Um, it's not. And, and I think the reason that all of these plans are shitty is because they're really it, no one knows what the fuck to do. I mean, I think that's ironically, that's sort of the, the, the leadership response that would be the most honest uh to Americans, but also the one that they never, ever want to hear, you know, to say that ISIS, you know, we don't know what to do. It's there's no there's no sort of coalition that can be formed because there's, you know, for the people who live in these countries, the choice is, you know, religious death cult or oppressive, you know, dictator regime. Who do you want to fight for? Um, and, you know, at least the death cult says life's going to be better after you're done living. You know, the, there's paradise involved. You know, the dictator, you just, you might get a, a holiday uh, after you win the war. Um, so I think that, you know, it's about presenting the illusion of, of you know, strength and, and a plan, uh, when in reality, we're probably not going to figure out the solution. The solution that, that will eventually take down, you know, whether it's the Islamic State or if it morphs into a new version of, you know, a jihadist terror group, um, because to be honest, you know, is the Islamic State is like the fourth or fifth generation of Al Qaeda. So, I mean, it's really all the same thing. They just change their names and, 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 you know, I, I don't think that there's an, an, a legitimate plan. There isn't a good plan out there now. And, you know, I, again, the person who would say that wouldn't comfort a lot of people, but would earn my vote just for pure balls and honesty. Um, and, and one more thing before I, I finish, just to sort of get to what Peter was saying. One thing I think that is, is interesting about sort of the Democratic leadership versus, say, Republican leadership, you know, you have Clinton saying what she did about torture, how it doesn't work, which is a true thing, and probably something not working is the best dis reason to not go with a particular policy suggestion, regardless of what it is. You know, same with Obama, going to the baseball game. In principle, going through your life normally after terror is a good thing. But they aren't able to, Democrats, it seems, get at that emotional business that like guys like Reagan could, you know, Reagan, uh, there was an article, I didn't actually dig into it, but apparently there was some sort of terror incident and Reagan also went to a baseball game that same day. And the reason no one was talking about it is because he came out and said, well, and gave one of his speeches and made everyone kind of smile and feel like America was good. And that's sort of what the democratic side is lacking. That's why, you know, they, they might be smart and kind of wonky about it and maybe even right. Who knows? Uh, but they don't make Americans feel that way. Whereas Republicans are almost surely completely fucking wrong. But God damn it, if it doesn't sound like they're one passionate and two going to see it through to the ugly finish. And I think that's sort of where the argument for Americans needs to be adjusted. You know, the Democrats need to start thinking about um, winning the idea argument and the emotional argument instead of just seeding that ground to Republicans who are able to then make cheap ploys at advocating for terror and torture and um, things like that. You know, it, it's a classic demagogue move. It's the go-to playbook, which is appeal to people's crudest emotions, um, and particularly when they're vulnerable, when, when they feel afraid. We have become, since 9-11, the most frightened country in the world. Americans live in a state of, of low-grade fear with occasional spikes uh, when something happens real or, or imagined. That, that's so – shouldn't be us. I was going to say it's still not us, but in fact it, it, it is us. And demagogues play to that. They love it. It's all the fault of the mm -hmm. Jews. It's all the fault of the Christians. It's all the fault of – it's still in the blank because it, it's the same sentence that everyone's been muttering 
from, from, from time uh, forward. And it's very, very sad that we have sort of devolved to that level. Um, and it's also very sad that there are politicians um, who have gotten so skillful at manipulating us to the point where they're able to kind of twist and turn the concept of, of democracy uh, itself uh, on its head. Look, every jihadi that got picked up in Iraq had photos from Abu Ghraib on his cell phone. Um, it was jihadi porn. They looked at it to get themselves pumped up. And the idea of torture working or not working is, is absolutely the wrong set of questions. The point is, is that when you say that tor- torture might be justified if it could work, you are saying that torture is okay. You're telling the world that America will torture you if we thought it would do any goddamn good. Um, at that point, you're telling folks, look, do you want to fight? These guys are going to torture you to death if they get a hold of you. So you better stand up and do something about that. Um, we have got to become ourselves again. We're better people than what we've become. And if we ever, ever want to have a chance of ameliorating terrorism, um, we've got to go backwards uh, and look at ourselves uh, before we became so goddamn frightened of everything. Peter, Peter, I just actually had a thought while you were talking, because tell me it's not like what it was like to actually be in Iraq, right? Like you're constantly hyper alert, watching every fucking thing, knowing something bad is going to happen. And then when something bad does happen, there's almost like this moment well, now, all right, the bad thing happened. Okay, I can I can exhale and now deal with the bad thing. It's uh, it's like the whole fucking country has PTSD. I mean, exactly. and I don't say that to make I don't say that to make light of of either situation. 